Um, so when you look at this discussion rubric, don't freak out. Um, try to get the sense of what I'm trying to convey to you and try to get an understanding of what it is that I want. Um, you know, we've all been in a situation where uh, we're reading something from a prof and, and it, it has certain expectations that we're looking at and we say, man, you're kidding me. This is what they want? That's ridiculous. That's outrageous. Uh, and then you look at it and you say, well, how am I going to do this based upon the rest of my work? There's always a way. There really is. There's always a way to balance your time. And with the three different days thing, Look, it could be as simple as you log in, pick one person's posting, read their thread, digest it, and eh, that doesn't interest me. Read another thread and say, ooh, that's kind of interesting. I read something that may contribute to, contribute to this discussion. And, you know, you spew forth a couple of paragraphs. Do it in Word. Do it in Microsoft Word or whatever you word process in. Run your spell check, and then you have to read it. Spellcheck has betrayed me over the lifetime of my career in industry and academia more than once. I'm not the only one. You can't rely on spellcheck. <laughs> it doesn't catch things. Um, so once you go through all that, then cut and paste it and put it into your Blackboard posting. And uh, making sure that you're looking at these rubric uh, grade ranges and levels and dynamics and elements of performance to say, okay, well, wait a minute, there's something I could add to, to take this from a B-level discussion to an A-level discussion. Um, and, and maybe, you know, you sit down uh, one afternoon and you do two more. Or the next day when you have, you know, 15 minutes, you do one more. Um, if, if you look at the data on online learning, um, the research tells us this you will spend at least the same amount, if not more, of time uh, in an online learning situation than you would if we were face-to-face. -face. So think about this. If Let's say we met, um, I don't know, twice a week for an hour and a half, something like that, or maybe once a week for three hours. Okay, that time is all class time and lecture time, discussion time, and then you have homework. Um, you may have one to three chapters to read. You may have a paper to write. Um, how many hours would that take you? You know, uh, anywhere from, I don't know, three to five maybe, depending. Uh, could take two to five. Don't know. Um, and, and from time to time when you have project work, that number grows. So already, you know, we're somewhere around maybe a 10-hour work week already. So you should, you should plan to spend at least 10 hours um, looking at your online work. This is not a blow-off endeavor, and I think sometimes um, when you talk about distance delivery, uh, people may um, misunderstand what good instructional design and delivery is in an electronic environment. So, okay, um, the one last thing is, too, is that all classes are not designed and delivered equally. I have had um, classes at the PhD level where um, a prof might put up one or two discussion boards for the whole semester and participation is not required. Uh, you're largely left to figure out what it is you're supposed to learn and you need to teach yourself this stuff because at the end of, of your coursework you have comprehensive exams. And you may or may not ever get the, the clue of the information you're going to need for your 12-hour written exams and your two-hour oral exams that follow. Um, it's pretty disorienting. Uh, and if the prof is, is not doing their job to stimulate conversation and to bring forth those points that students are supposed to learn, uh, students can tend to be pretty lost. I've had these courses. Um, it, it, it troubles me as an educator. I've been an educator for a very long time in a variety of different venues and means. And I care about my students from the standpoint of, I don't want you to leave this course saying, wow, that was a big waste of time. I didn't learn a thing. Um, that's probably the worst thing that I feel could be a student outcome. Um, so, so while I'm uh, 
on my soapbox about the discussion rubric and the participation and all those things, understand that I really want you to be successful in walking away from this course, looking at things just a little bit differently, questioning things, um, have the ability to have a dialogue with with someone over an issue and say, wait a minute, have you considered this point? And this is uh, uh, kind of tough to do in today's society. Uh, we tend to lack the ability to agree to disagree. And what that means is if I sit down and talk with you something about something, say, um, politics is a real tough discussion to have in any form at the moment because people are so charged up in how they feel, regardless of whatever side of the argument they're on for or against whatever it is. Um, it becomes personal and visceral and angry very, very quickly if the people within the dialogue, potential dialogue situation, don't have the ability to listen to each other and say, all right, I can't even understand where you're coming from. I'm trying very hard to understand what your argument is and why you're making this argument. And at the end of the day, I'm probably not going to agree with what you're saying. But I hadn't ever considered that viewpoint before now. And, and you might leave that conversation saying, eh, man, you know, we're so far away on this, we're going to have to agree to disagree. Respectfully so, fine. But you may, again, walk away from this saying, well, there are other viewpoints and other ways to consider things. I think they're crazy. I think they're full of hot air. Um, they're, they're basing their arguments on, you know, poor information or bad science or whatever the case is. Um, and they don't have a leg to stand on, so to speak. But there are people out there who feel this way. In other words, the world is bigger than my opinion. Um, this is critical thinking. And this is how you apply this as an adult. You're all there. You're all juniors and seniors. You're all at the end of your college career. And what you should walk away with is an understanding of how to take theoretical concepts and apply them. Um, critical thinking is a very, very theoretical concept. And what this means is train yourself to think differently. Look at things differently. Provide yourself with more than sound bites of information. Provide yourself with the best possible information to educate yourself on any given issue before you even step into the arena to argue a point. We're notoriously bad at this right now societally. Um, so my goal is to pose some of these very big questions regarding technology and society to you and give you a forum to practice critical thinking and argument development and dialogue. I want you to leave this course with those things. So to that end, remember when my office hours are, Tuesday nights, 6 to 8, I'm usually like the Maytag repairman. Schedule your time. That's always the best way to do it. And if you catch me online and um, my Skype is green, um, that means I'm sitting there um, waiting to hear from you. Uh, send me an email. And you have my phone number, so you can always call me. If I can't talk to you, uh, it'll go to voicemail and I'll get back with you. You can text. Um, although if you text, you got to make sure you let me know who you are. Uh, just like the Skype um, invitations, I, I got a couple of them that I had to really sit there and kind of scratch my head to figure out who it was. So don't be cryptic um, and don't be shy. I am here for you if you need anything and I'm looking forward to a very, very good week of discussions. Sight. Sight and proofread. Thank you. Take care.